you say the single best book I have found on who we are and how we got here is The Ancient City uh, by Numa Dennis Fostel de Kulankis. Uh, what's, uh, what did you learn about who we are as a human civilization from that book? It's, uh, it was this guy who was a professor at the Sorbonne in the 1860s, and he was apparently a savant on uh, antiquity, on, on Greek and Roman antiquity. Um, and, and the reason I say that is because his sources are 100% original Greek and Roman sources. So he wrote a basically a history of Western civilization from on the order of 4,000 years ago to basically the present times, entirely working on fresh, original Greek and, and Roman, Roman sources. Um, and what he was specifically trying to do was he was trying to reconstruct from the stories of the Greeks and the Romans, he was trying to reconstruct what life in the West was like before the Greeks and the Romans, which was in this, in this, in the civilization known as the, the, the Indo-Europeans. Um, and the short answer is, and this is sort of circa 4,000, you know, 2000 BC to, you know, sort of 500 BC, kind of that 1500 year stretch where civilization developed. Uh, and his conclusion was basically cults. Um, they were basically cults and the civilization was or or organized into cults and the, the intensity of the cults was like a million fold beyond anything that we would recognize today. Like it was a level of um, all encompassing belief and uh, an action around religion um, that was at a level of extremeness that we, we wouldn't even recognize it. Um, uh, and, and so specifically, he tells the story of basically th there were three levels of cults. There was the family cult, the tribal cult, and then the city cult as, as society scaled up. And then each cult was a joint cult of uh, family gods, which were ancestor gods and then nature gods. Um, and then your bonding into a family, a tribe, or a city was based on your adherence to that religion. Mm -hmm. um, people uh, who were not of your family, tribe, city worshipped different gods, which gave you not just the right, but the responsibility to kill them on sight. So they were serious about their cults. Hardcore. By the way, shocking development. I did not realize there's zero concept of individual rights. Like even even up through the Greeks and even in the Romans, they didn't have, have the concept of individual rights. Like the idea that as an individual, you have like some right, it's just like, nope, right? And you look back and you're just like, wow, that's just like crazily like fascist in a degree that we wouldn't recognize today. But it's like, well, they were living under extreme pressure for survival. And you, and you know, the theory goes, you could not have people running around making claims to individual rights when you're just trying to get like your tribe through the winter, right? Like you need like hardcore command and control. And, and so, and, and, and actually what, what if through modern political lens, those cults were basically both fascist and communist. Um, they were fascist in terms of social control and then they were communist in terms of economics. My conclusion from this book, so the way we naturally think about the world we live in today is like, we basically have such an improved version of everything that came before us, right? Like we, we, we have basically, we've figured out all these things around morality and ethics and democracy and all these things. And like, they were basically stupid and retrograde and we're like smart and sophisticated mm -hmm. and we've improved all this. Um, I, I, after reading that book, uh, I, I now believe in, in many ways the opposite, which is no, actually we are still running in that original model. We're just running in an incredibly diluted version of it. So we're still running basically in cults. It's just our cults are at like a thousandth or a millionth the level of intensity, right? And so our, so just to, to take religions, you know, the modern experience of a Christian in our time, even somebody who considers them a devout Christian is just a shadow of the level of intensity of somebody who belonged to a religion back in, in that yeah. period. And then by the way, we, we, we then sort of endlessly create new cults. Like we're, we're trying to fill the void, right? We're, and the void is a void of, of bonding, okay. Living in their era, like everybody living today, transport in that era would view it as just like completely intolerable in terms of like the, lo the loss of freedom and the level of basically fascist control. However, every single person in that era, and he really stresses this, they knew exactly where they stood. Mm -hmm. They knew exactly where they belonged. They knew exactly what their purpose was. They knew exactly what they needed to do every day. They knew exactly why they were doing it. They had total certainty about their place in the universe. So the question of meaning, the question of purpose was very distinctly, clearly defined for them. Absolutely, overwhelmingly. It, undisputably, undeniably. As we turn the volume down on the cultism, yes, we start to uh, the search for meaning starts getting harder and harder. Yes, because we we don't have that. We are we are ungrounded. We are we are we are uncentered, and we and we all feel it, right? And that's why we reach for you know. It's why we still reach for religion. It's why we reach for you know. We, people start to take on you know. Let's say you know a faith in science, maybe beyond where they should put it. Uh, you know, and by the way, like sports teams are like a, you know, they're like a tiny little version of a cult and, you know, the, you know, Apple keynotes are a tiny little version of a cult. 
right? <laughs> and, you know, political, you know. Yeah. And there's cult, you know, there's full blown cults on both sides of the political spectrum right now, right? Um, you know, operating in plain sight. But still not full blown oh, compared as to what it was. Compared to what it used to. I mean, we would today consider full blown, but like, yes, they're they're at like, I don't know, a hundred thousandth or something of the intensity of, of, of what people had back then. So, so we live in a world today that in many ways is more advanced and moral and so forth. And it's certainly a lot nicer, much nicer world to live in. But we live in a world that's like very washed out. It's like everything has become very colorless and gray as compared to how people used to experience things, which is, I think, why we're so prone to reach for drama. We, 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 there's something in us that's deeply evolved where we want that back. And I wonder where it's all headed mm -hmm. as we turn the volume down more and more.